Straight out of Grass Valley, Frederick! Christy. Christy. Hi. I'm going to be responding to Xiao Ming's question on religion and on the science behind it, as well as evolution. Let's take those in turn. First is science behind religion. There isn't any. And that's not a disparaging remark. I'm not saying religion is necessarily any worse because there's no science behind it. They're satisfying two very different spheres of human influence and inquiry. So what does science do, right? Science is a means whereby we objectively, with empirical rules of evidence established through logic, oh, gosh, established yeah. through rationality, with those rules we attempt to discover empirical fact. So in science you have these very particular rules, like you have to have a, a, a thesis or a hypothesis which is falsifiable, right? If I were to say, I believe that all uh, sunlight comes from invisible pixies, I might or might not be true, but that's not a scientific hypothesis because there's no way to verify it or to disprove it. So we have these very particular rules, and science is very good at answering some very particular questions. Questions like nature of gravity, uh, the nature of food, the nature of biology, and yet we still don't know much about these domains. So it's not a big insult to say something's not scientific. Neither is love, neither is poetry, neither are all sorts of things that are incredibly valuable. Right? But religion isn't scientific. The problem comes when one side or the other tries to hijack the other's sphere. So we'll get to that. What, now, what does religion do? Religion is a way for us to answer fundamental spiritual questions. Questions like, do we believe there's an afterlife? Do we believe there's a God? How should we be decent people? How can we be happy? These are questions that spirituality answers to some extent. There's other parts of those answers too. There's psychological answers. There's communal answers. So we know that we're happier when we're around people that we like, when we're around people who we share ideas and interests with. And that's a social question. But spirituality helps answer a lot of those questions and helps us get at different ideas and different questions than, than science. So again, no problem as long as that division of labor is actually adhered to. Now, I would say that there are some religions that have some amount of empirical element to it. For example, I personally think that Buddhism has a lot of an empirical or scientific mindset to it in that <coughs> it comes from these kind of, a lot of Buddhism's tenets come from observation of people and observation of what works to make people happy. However, a lot of people argue Buddhism is even a religion. It's more of a philosophy. And I think it's a fair distinction. Similarly, Taoism, which is also much more of a philosophy than a religion, comes from observations about the nature of reality and the nature of life. So there are some religions that can have a, a scientific foundation, but when we say things like, thou shall not kill because God says you sh thou shouldn't kill, that's not a scientific question. There's no scientific pr study out there that can prove we shouldn't kill. These are normative questions. These are questions that are subjective, they're moral, and they're decided by people, right? So what about evolution? What, what's going on here? The problem with the religious backlash against evolution is not that religion has an idea. It's not the religious part of it. It's that religion is trying to put its nose where it doesn't belong, into science. The scientific hypothesis for the formation of species, for why genes do what they do, for why DNA looks the way it does, the single, there is no other, hypothesis is some form of evolution. Now, there's a lot of questions about what exactly happens. This isn't a static field, right? It's not like there hasn't been any changes to Darwin. So all the people out there who try to demonize Darwin, right, all of the religious fundamentalists who say Darwin was wrong, are really missing the point. Nobody believes what Darwin believes. This is science. Science changes every day. Some, people, some scientists say that all the science you're going to learn in any kind of science program to college might be obsolete by the time you get out. These are things that are changing very rapidly as we discover new things. So, for example, Gould, right, I believe it was Gould, made a major discovery when he pointed out something called punctuated equilibrium. We were looking at species, we looked in the fossil record, and we discovered that species seem to emerge in this very brief time period. Previously, we thought of evolution as this kind of very continuous process. It's happening all the time, new species are kind of constantly emerging. Gould changed our idea and said, no, 
it seems like species have to emerge very suddenly from very powerful factors, right? A, a, a continent splits off or an island splits off, uh, some major calamity, some major drought, those cause speciation. And until that point, you have relative stability, what he called punctuated equilibrium. Right? Now, so that indicates that the science behind evolution is constantly changing. Before Watson and Crick discovered DNA, right? before they discovered the double helix of deoxyribose nucleic acid, we had no idea exactly how genetic information was passed down now, understanding how DNA works, how it encodes. We have all sorts of understandings about how mutations arise, about how organisms can differentiate, about differences between mammals and birds, and we know about real history. We, we know about where evolutionary paths split off thanks to DNA evidence. We know now, thanks to fossil and DNA evidence that was just not available to Darwin, that dinosaurs probably were the ancestors of modern birds. They are not these cold-blooded, slow, sluggish reptiles we think of, but rather much more like the modern, fierce <coughs> raptors that we imagine in the modern era, right? So velociraptors are much more like a hawk than an alligator. Um, so the problem when somebody says, I don't believe in evolution because the Bible says this happened, is that they're saying something about a real fact, right? It is a real question about where life came from. You can't just surmise or assume that. And as it turns out, all of the evidence indicates that evolution, DNA, genetics, those are the explanation. Right? That is a clear, simple fact. So, for example, if you honestly believe that evolution doesn't exist, you cannot take most modern drugs. If you believe that evolution doesn't happen because you don't believe in the Bible, you cannot accept modern genetic theory. You cannot accept modern DNA theory. You cannot accept the idea that bacteria evolve. Right? So we have this big problem where bacteria and other organisms that attack us become resistant to our antibacterials and to our drugs. Well, there's no explanation for that except for evolution. When you introduce something that kills off 99% of the population, the only remaining people are those that are resistant to it. Evolution gives us a clear, simple, non-trivial answer to why resistance emerges to, among bacteria to our antibiotics. There is no other explanation. Religious people certainly have not an explanation. So very simply, the problem with the dis discussion we have in our society, and it is only America, it is only America where this insanity can happen. The only problem with the discussion is that people are letting their religious beliefs dominate a scientific discussion. They're letting their private creation myth eclipse what we have discovered through hard intellectual work in the laboratory and through hundreds of years of real digging at difficult problems and discovering evidence and making arguments. And the only argument that has passed muster and that has thousands and thousands of pages of support for more than a century is the model of evolution originally proposed by Darwin, but since added with all sorts of different models and all sorts of different concepts. So basically, to sum up, nothing's wrong with religious feeling. I don't, I personally do not accept the Dawkins conclusion that religion is insanity. I think that people can have all sorts of religious beliefs, atheist, agnostic, Buddhist, Christians are all fine. It's that those spiritual beliefs are okay as long as we don't allow them to eclipse other areas of our life. In this case, religious beliefs are being allowed to eclipse common sense, reason, and sanity in the scientific sphere. And that is the core problem. Once again, this is Frederick Christie!